So the Lord replied and said to him, Okay, Moses, since you begin to ask, since, since you are the only one out of all these people, since you are, listen, that's very important to understand. Since you were the only one out of all these 3, 10, 15, 20, I don't know how many millions, knowing who I am, seeing who, what I have done, you are the only one to ask this of me. Because I understand that without me you cannot live. And I cannot throw you out because of that. I'm not a God like this. If somebody is asking me to stay with him all his life, I will. All right? He says, because of that, I will personally go with you. And I will give you rest. Everything will be fine with you. I want, to, I want you to see this verse. Three places in this verse are incredibly important. The response of God into after Moses expressed his heart. The Lord replied and said, I will go with you, not with the children of Israel. He personalized everything now. He says, Okay, Moses. I will go with you. My presence will be on you. Not on them. On you. Do you know that God's presence and the anointing is not just spread it just worldwide like this, just take it, have a piece of me? No. No. It's so personal. It's such a relational it's greater than a marriage. You understand? To be in love with God, it's much greater than a marriage. Oh, it's much greater than a marriage. And God has his principles. So God said to Moses, You want me to know? You want to know my ways? The only way you will do this and know this if my presence will stay on you. It means I will be with you. And he personalized. He said, listen to this. And I underline these things. I will be with you, Moses. And I will give you rest. The children of Israel died out, didn't they? In the wilderness. He says, I will give you rest, and everything will be fine with you. Here's my guarantee for you, Moses, alone, that everything will be fine for you. You see how personal God is? If you want this in your life, that everything will be fine with you and for you, and God will give you rest, that is exactly the same way. It's not because you are here, it's not because of me, it's not because of anybody, it's because of your relationship with God. Amen. Your personal. Amen? When Mo Moses heard this, and only Moses could understand this message when God spoke to him. Moses began to understand what God meant by saying this. <laughs> then Moses, Moses in verse 15 says, Lord, if you don't personally go with us, if you don't go with us personally, don't make us leave this place. Why? Why this place? Because Moses thought that's where God recited. Let us be here and live under here, under this mount, because that's where your presence is. We don't want to go anywhere without your presence. 
Verse 17 says this, The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look firmly on you, and I know you by your name. So he actually assured Moses that he will go with him, and God's presence will be on him. And Moses said in verse, 20, uh, verse 18, In that case, show me your glory. <laughs> Moses was kind of man, eh? He goes all the way. He digs everything out from God. He goes as much as, as far as he can think what he can do. Just to have a relationship with God. Lord, just show me your glory. <laughs> and the Lord said, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you, for I will show mercy on whom I choose, and I will show compassion to whom I choose. And you know the story, he says, but when I'll pass, I'll close your face because you cannot see me. The main point of this story is incredible. Incredible. And what God showed me is to speak to people and to tell them this. God is a personal God. Amen. You may come and be touched by the Lord because of the anointing upon somebody else. Right? You can come to a service where the, where the anointing is, and God is still given that opportunity to touch your life, and this, and so, and so, and so, to touch your life, but that's not enough. The same thing God wants to have you in your life personally. Hallelujah. You know who understood this very well? Joshua. Joshua understood this very well, not because he went to a Bible college there, right? But because he was assistant of Moses. Assistant of Moses. And Moses taught him after this the principles that he understood from God himself personally. Right? This is why Joshua became a great leader after Moses, is because he took over, not the position of Moses, but he received, he received the same passion that Moses had. And through Moses, Joshua was able to get this fire and the passion for God. Moses because Moses was I believe his personal leader and teacher sharing with him how good God is Joshua was around the camp all the time and Joshua was around people all the time and Joshua saw the problems Even Moses' sister and brother went against him in the book of Numbers. Right? His own sister and brother, why? It's because their relationship with God was not that great. 
But Joshua was observing things, looking for things, learning from Moses. See, everything what Joshua saw with his own eyes, it was not enough. And what did you see? Manna from heaven, water from the rock, shoes never were out, healing, deliverance, all the miracles he witnessed. Don't you believe this? With his own eyes, he witnessed every miracle just as every Israelite witnessed. But what Moses was able to transform into his life, he could not witness with his eyes. It has to come from deep calls unto deep. Right? When he spent time with uh, uh, Joshua and told him, God's presence is so awesome God's ways are so wonderful this is why when Moses was repeating everything in the book of Deuteronomy before he went to heaven the whole book of Deuteronomy 30 some chapters he was repeating and he was begging Israel but he could not transform his heart to them He could not. And he would cry and beg them and tell them, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, our Lord is one. That's all he could say. But in his heart, he knew way more than just the words could express. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, he says, with all your might, with all your strength. He was trying to explain to them. And they were all saying, yes, Moses, of course, we will listen to you and do exactly as you say. No, it's not what exactly what we say. It's exactly how you understand. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Joshua got this. He was able to soak all the valuable information from Moses. Therefore, he became a great leader. Amen? Amen. He became a great leader. When we are listening to some marvelous teachings that somebody brings, who has a personal relationship with God. How attentive are you? How attentive I am. I, when I listen to a preacher, whether it's radio or television, I can sense where that preacher stands with God. Is it theology he's teaching, given the information, or his relationship with God? personal experience I can sense and when I listen to this theological teachings I say it's nice to know the historical fact of everything and the colors of everything and this and that it's nice to understand the codes but will I live by them what will make you strong The rhema or the logos? The logos is the written word. The rhema is the revealed. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what happened to Moses. And God said, I will go with you, Moses. Amongst even this rebellious nation, I will go with you because you have asked me. And I will give you rest and everything will be fine with you. That's my promise. Your relationship brings with God through Christ Jesus. 
determines your destiny. Amen? Your relationship with each other, your husband and wife, determines your destiny. Your family. It's all about relationship. Hallelujah. And do you know, God showed Moses his glory. He went and proclaimed the name of the Lord. There was nothing religious about this. God himself did it. And after that, God has given him another set of Ten Commandments to bring back to people. I could speak more things about this, but I want to say something. That God can restore people and restore and forgive and have, God can have mercy. 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 Not only on a couple of people, God can restore the whole church and have mercy because of one person who is paying the price. You listen? God can restore things. God doesn't need thousands of people to win this world. He needs somebody who, whom he can anoint. Everybody wants the anointing. You ask who wants the anointing, everybody says, me, 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 I, I, I'm, it's me. But people don't understand that the anointing is very costly. It's the price to pay. It's the price to pay. But do you know, because of Moses' uh, uh, Moses, uh, relationship with God and his commitment, and because he was sold out to God, One day God called Moses and he said, Moses, call 70 elders with you to the mount. And when they came, he says, you lay hands on them and the anointing that is on you will be on them. Well, that thing has happened. It's because God wanted to give Moses help. But those people have received this anointing for the time being without paying any price. Moses was the only one who paid the price for this. Are you following me? Amen. They received this for a lesser price than Moses paid. But Moses was so happy about this that finally somebody in the camp will understand the experience that he has with God. Amen and amen and amen. What a mighty and wonderful God we serve. When we look into the scriptures, we find a lot of powerful, wonderful things. And uh, well, we live in by faith. We trust in God for everything. That's number one. Secondly, we also uh, depend on His power and presence in our life. Amen. Uh, it's, it, it's amazing when God is overshad uh, overshadowing you or overpowering you, when God is filling you with His Spirit, you are a different person. This is why we need to continue to uh, clean to God and uh, this is why Paul said pray without ceasing how do you do this uh, you can't stay on, a, on your knees all day long and pray no it, that's not what Paul meant prayer it's a conversation with God
it's a talk with God. When I drive a car, I pray, I speak to God. Basically, my mind is always connected to God. I, I worship, I pray, I praise. Uh, it, it means my day basically spent in prayer. Amen. And that is wonderful. And then, of course, you de de designate some time in the day uh, so that you really can seek God and be in His presence. But God wants us to be in His presence. Uh, what is it saying in Colossians 3? That our mind will be set on Christ. Our mind will be set not on things on earth, but on things above where Christ is. So anytime you're thinking about, anytime we, we're communicating with Jesus all the time, we're talking to Him in our mind. Uh, in my car, I'm talking to Him loudly, actually. I just praise God, I just talk to God, and I thank God, and I praise Him. Amen. It's important to keep the communication with God. It's important to be filled with the Spirit. It's important to keep our heart, our mind, our spirit uh, uh, tuned, tuned with God. Amen. When you're going to do that, you'll find yourself in much more victories than you ever can. Amen. Precious Jesus, let me pray for you right now. Father, in the mighty precious name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, I, I pray and I thank you for your mercy. I sense the presence of God even now. I want to thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody has a heart problem. You have a heart problem. It's uh, it's a pain in your heart. And, uh, you know, God is fixing it. And, and, and I can see it. that It's right inside, almost inside of your heart. And it's uh, like a, a problem with your valve or uh, arteries. And God is healing you in the name of Jesus. You'll find yourself in a few days that there will be no pain and you're going to breathe better and you're going to be healed because God loves you. He wants you to testify this miracle. God wants you to know that He has healed you and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Precious God. And I pray for everyone, everyone who is listening and watching in the mighty precious name of Jesus. But the main thing is right now, just raise up Raise your hands and just be filled with the Spirit. As we're broadcasting this in the morning, isn't it wonderful to meet the Holy Spirit in the morning? Oh Lord, just fill, fill your people with your Spirit and give them victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Friends, we just changed our mailing address and here is the information we moved and uh, so is the mailing address moved as well we've been there for years in Chateaugay but now we moved to Bois de Ferion, and it's a French uh, uh, name uh, of that city where we are now and so we have a PO box there so here's the, the, the address please make a note of it and if you write to us write to this address those who receive in our newsletter you will receive our newsletter with the envelope already printed with this address as well but please keep this address in mind if you need more information on our address give us a call and we'll let you know again about the zip code and the whole address again now thank you so much for listening today thank you so much for watching and thank you for helping us to continue to broadcast this uh, uh, message of God to your home and to your neighbors Thank you. God bless you. Shalom to you. And until tomorrow, be blessed. Bye-bye.
Yeah. 